I'm Paul Harlow from Harlow Farm, um, Westminster, Vermont, here in the Connecticut River Valley. Um, also the home of Deep Root Organic Truck Farmers, a marketing cooperative that uh, I'm a member of. Uh, I farm about 100 acres of organic vegetables right here in the uh, Connecticut River Valley, some, uh, some of the richest farm, farmland around. What we've tried to do at Harlow Farm is develop a crop mix that allows us to um, use our labor efficiently, but also to uh, provide the market with the produce that they need at a certain time of the year. Um, we try to combine uh, a mix of, of fresh vegetables, including lettuce, kale, peppers, cabbages, um, with storage crops that can be sold long term. Beets and carrots and rutabagas and squash. Howell Farm has kind of developed a, a pattern of growing the same eight to ten crops every year figuring that over the course of 10 years that will do well, you know, some years and not so well others, and that uh, trying to guess what the marketplace is going to be from year to the next in, in the produce business is, is not, <laughs> it's probably not a wise thing to do. Because of, the, of the, the price pressure for wholesale vegetables, we have to become very efficient, um, and we really keep an eye on, on unit costs. Deep Roots, I think, is known for, for its high quality, and we try to constantly upgrade that. Um, things that we've done in the last few years are we, we bought a hydro cooler, so now we're hydro cooling all our lettuce and kale so that um, we provide a good fresh um, product that stays on the market. Other things that we've done that are somewhat innovative are we stem tag and rubber band identify all uh, uh, most all of our products. Uh, these all have PLU numbers or things that uh, the market um, is almost demanding now that they have identification, especially the supermarkets is where the, the big growth area for organic is. I think the best things for the co-op for me and our farm is that um, it, it helps us provide a, a cohesive marketing plan and that we get together during the winter and try to grow things um, that we that each farm does does well and that we don't overlap um, so that you know, throughout the course of the marketing season um, the co-op has a steady supply of the crops that we feel like we need to sell. My name is Dennis Sauer. I'm a foreman of Harlow Farm, Westminster, Vermont. Uh, I've known Paul for a number of years. Uh, I was a member with him in the Deep Root Cooperative. Um, and when I uh, decided to quit farming on my own, I went to work for Paul. I was one of the founding members of the co-op. I joined in the second year, um, so I was part of the process of getting the co-op running, writing the bylaws, and setting up the process for how we marketed and dealt with uh, crop production estimates in the winters. And um, in the first five years were the hardest year for the co-op. And it was a challenge to get the co-op up and running. And um, a lot of the things that we did in those first few years we're still using today. The main advantages of the co-op, and the reason that we came together as a co-op, was that um, individually we, we couldn't um, address all the needs of our accounts in the, in the metropolitan area. So by combining loads and, and farmers growing particular crops, we were able to offer a wider range of product and fill trucks in order to get the volume that the, that the buyers needed. Um, and that's still true today. I mean, we can fill trailer loads to go to Maryland, with, which one farm could never do, but the combined co-op with various different products can fill the trucks. And so every farmer, whether they're a small herb grower or a you know, one, one crop farmer still gets their stuff to our farthest, farthest markets. The key to the co-op is, is cooperation, and, and, um, which takes a, a lot of effort um, by, on the part of the farmers. They, you know, meeting in the winter, deciding crop production levels, uh, deciding you know, who gets to grow what, how much of what based on previous sales, um, packing conditions, uh, you know, particular items like, you know, quality, who gets rejected, who decides who, you know, what gets rejected. All of these things are things that individual farmers would never have to do on their own. It's pretty much their own decision, whereas in the cooperative, you have to honor the, the wishes of the entire cooperative. And, and for farmers who tend to be fairly independent, that sometimes causes problems, you know, to have someone telling them what, what they can't do. So it's, it's, it's a challenge all the time, but the benefits are that, that these, you can get your products into markets that you otherwise wouldn't reach. Well, originally the co-op, all it took to be in the co-op was a commitment of a crops and a hundred dollar a year membership fee. But, but we quickly realized that um, without an equity investment by the growers, 
um, the, the farmers sort of treated the co-op as a, when they needed the market, they used it, but when they didn't, they, they didn't use it. They went elsewhere. They get a better price, and, and the co-op also needed equity to buy some equipment and office equipment, pay the managers, and some sort of security. So what happened is, is now it's required for the growers to own equity shares. Leonard, Chris, hi. I've got a question for you. Is there any way you can get 20 zucchini oh, by Friday? Well, I'm screwed then, because I need, Kevin wants 20 zucchini for Friday, and I don't have any. No, I don't think there is either. I better call him right now. Definitely the benefits of the co-op, and I think, that, you know, they're not, they're not as tangible as the, the markets, but, but the, um, the growers' involvement with each other, the, the planning year to year, knowing what each other, is going to grow, how they're going to grow it, varieties, talking about, you know, there's a lot of on-farm research, people share information, uh, they share equipment, um, and also it's just, you know, it's, you, you avoid the isolation of farming on your own farm, you get to talk to other growers on a regular basis and, and sort of share the ups and downs, which, which is a valuable experience for a lot of farmers, especially, uh, you know, in a, in a market that's uh, really price-driven and, you know, downward price driven so so it, it's helpful to have other people that are in the same pressures that that you are um, and in the winter time it's it's nice for the growers to get together and i think a lot of them enjoy the the process